Hi, welcome to 7 Facts, the channel where you get to watch a video about every single country on earth. This is the first episode dedicated to the Canadian provinces and territories, and today it's all about the province of Alberta. Obviously there's a playlist containing all of these videos, so be sure to check it out. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this one. I upload twice a week so it'll be worth it. Alberta is one of the provinces that make up Canada. In case you didn't know, Canada is a federation of 10 provinces and 3 territories. Alberta is the country's fourth most populous province and has an area of 661,000 square kilometers, which makes it a bit larger than France. But, while France has 67 million residents, Alberta has only 4 million. Even so, it's a pretty important place for Canada's and the world's economy. This province is home to the Athabasca oil sands, one of the world's largest deposits of extremely heavy crude oil, or asphalt. Also known as bitumen, this is the stuff that is used, among other things, to build the smooth road surfaces we're used to. The Athabasca deposits contain 1.7 trillion barrels of bitumen. Yes, you heard right, 1.7 trillion. That's about as much as the entire world's total proven reserves of normal petroleum. As is the case with every American country, state or province, Alberta used to be inhabited by Native American populations. In fact, Alberta was probably among the earliest American regions inhabited by humans who crossed over from Siberia to America some 10,000 years ago. But after the Europeans arrived, the history of the place changed. When Britain took control of the land that's now Alberta, approximately half of the province became part of Rupert's land. This area was granted by Charles II of England to the famous Hudson Bay Company in 1670 and rival fur trading companies were not allowed to trade in it. This was one of the most profitable businesses of the time, so naturally others joined in soon. Fur traders formed the Northwest Company of Montreal to compete with the Hudson Bay Company in 1779. They occupied the northern part of Alberta. Fur trade then expanded in the north, but the competition was so serious that bloody battles actually occurred between the two rival companies. So much so that in 1821, the British government had to step in and force them to merge to stop the hostilities. Saying trick or treat when you go door to door at Halloween is a tradition that apparently started in Alberta. Halloween's history goes back hundreds of years, but the earliest known use of trick or treat didn't occur until 1927 in Blackie, Alberta. A local newspaper reported on costumed pranksters uttering the phrase at different houses, and this is the first printed account of this famous phrase. The thousands of Halloween postcards produced between the turn of the 20th century and the 1920s commonly show children, but not trick-or-treating. This practice does not seem to have become a widespread practice until the 1930s, after the first mentioning of it in Alberta. Edmonton is the capital city of Alberta. It's also one of Canada's biggest cities, with nearly 1 million people living there. It started out as a fort of the Hudson Bay Company in 1795, but in a little over a century, it grew large enough to be named as the capital of the newly formed province of Alberta in 1905. If you get a chance to visit, be sure to have your shopping list ready, because the city is home to the largest shopping mall in North America, West Edmonton Mall. Covering 490,000 square meters, the mall has over 800 stores, 100 dining venues, 2 hotels, 
nine major attractions such as water parks and theme parks and the parking space for 20,000 vehicles. Between 90,000 and 200,000 people visit the mall every single day. And if you're in Edmonton, you're definitely gonna be one of them. About 290 kilometers south of the capital is Calgary, which is the largest city in Alberta. The authorities invested tens of millions of dollars into making it a clean city. Composting and recycling alone swallowed $31 million so far, but by 2020 it is expected that more than 80% of the city's garbage will be diverted away from landfills. Calgary is also one of the best places a human can live. As of 2017, it has been ranked as the fifth most livable city on the planet for eight consecutive years. The city has consistently scored high in things like stability, healthcare, culture, environment, education, infrastructure and security. So basically, they're good at everything. Have you ever heard about that place that built an actual UFO landing site? You know, just in case? Well, the landing site is here in Alberta. More precisely, it's in the town of St. Paul. Built as a centennial project in an effort to attract both tourists and Martians, the pad consists of a raised platform with a map of Canada embossed on the backstop, consisting of stones provided by each province of Canada. The sign beside the pad reads, the area under the world's first UFO landing pad was designated international by the town of St. Paul as a symbol of our faith that mankind will maintain the outer universe free from national wars and strife, that future travel in space will be safe for all intergalactic beings, all visitors from Earth or otherwise are welcome to this territory and to the town of St. Paul. Have you ever been dreaming of having your own aircraft carrier, but just don't have enough money? Well then, here's an idea for you. Why not build it out of ice? Project Habakkuk was aiming to do just that. During World War II, the British were trying to construct an aircraft carrier out of wood pulp and ice in a mixture called piecrete. It was to be used against the German U-boats in the mid-Atlantic, which were beyond the flight range of land-based planes at the time. The carrier would not have needed fuel and would have been able to self-propel, if temperatures were right to keep the mixture of ice and pulp solid. The decision was made to build a large-scale model at Jasper National Park in Alberta to examine insulation and refrigeration techniques and to see how Pycrete would stand up to artillery and explosives. Large ice blocks were constructed at Lake Louise and a small prototype was constructed at Patricia Lake measuring 18 by 9 meters, weighing 1000 tons and kept frozen by a 1 horsepower motor. The Canadian government was confident it could build a 1000 ton model in 2 weeks by 8 men, so Winston Churchill was anxious to buy as many as he could. Sadly, the design proved to be troublesome and costly, and Project Habakkuk was eventually scrapped. But perhaps one day we'll see these ice ships being built. Well, that would be cool. These were 7 facts about Alberta. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Share your thoughts downstairs in the comment section and afterwards, please check me out on Facebook and Twitter. A good way to offer more support to this channel is through Patreon, the link is in the description. I hope to see you next time, bye.